So now the Turkish president, Tayyip Erdogan, has uh, won more than a half of the votes in a Sunday's presidential election, easing the country's anxiety prior to the elections. The South African rand and other emerging market uh, currencies uh, could benefit from the boost seen in the Turkish lira. I'm now joined by Ali Sina, who is a, a president of the Turkish Heritage Organization, to tell us more about the economic an anticipation here. Um, Ali, let's start with the, the, the 160,000 people who were jailed after that uh, uh, uprising uh, some time uh, less than two years ago. Uh, not to forget the fact that uh, he did win the referendum. And wasn't this just a, a kind of a show that uh, uh, was put up? Uh, wasn't it already decided? Actually, the winner of the uh, election is the Turkish democracy. Right. Uh, Ali, maybe if I could just uh, elaborate the more on that. Uh, made a decision to go. Right, Ali, could you please uh, carry on? Yes. So the winner is Turkish democracy. Uh, the Turkish people decided to have the power present Erdogan again, and he got over 52% of the vote. Uh, and the Turkish and Turkish uh, people uh, would like to see President Erdogan till 2023 to, you know, uh, lead the country. Uh, there were issues about uh, uh, freedom of press or human rights issues, but President Erdogan made a promise that he's going to lift the state of emergency and have more freedom and fix some legal uh, rights issues. So I think he made some good uh, promises during the campaign. Right. Now, you have mentioned that he is an extremely popular leader in Turkey. And of course, the people have voted for him to stay uh, as the president. But he has also been described as an extremely divisive leader. What would you say to those critics? Well, when you look at from the West side, yes, there are a lot of criticism uh, in West. However, when we look at the, uh, in Turkey, the Turkish people gave, gave the authority uh, for President Erdogan to lead the country. So unfortunately, West is misreading uh, the picture in Turkey. If he was kind of not a good leader, then we could uh, talk in a different way. If over 50% vote is a big number. And today, the opposition party leader Muharrem Ince accepted the results. It was a fairly election. So this is a win for the temo Turkish democracy. Uh, unfortunately, Turkey is doing a bad PR outside of Turkey. And uh, Turkey has problems. However, uh, with the new system, with the new reforms, I think Erdogan, President Erdogan will have a better chance to explain himself, explain what the Turkey is going forward. Uh, from uh, 2018. Uh, Ali, let's talk about uh, the Kurdish voters because uh, f this is a very fascinating development where we are seeing uh, the pro-Kurdish party HDB uh, exceeding that 10% uh, threshold that is needed to actually be represented in the parliament. What does this signal? Does this actually mean that the opposition is gaining a foothold here and it's just a matter of time uh, that uh, we actually see a change in guard? So there will be seven parties uh, in the Turkish parliament. The biggest surprise was Nationalist Party, MHP. But as you said, the Kurdish party, HDP, uh, will be also in the Turkish parliament, and they will also represent the Kurdish people. The problem with HDP is linked to PKK, which is a terrorist organization recognized by United States and European Union. So that was the biggest problem uh, for many Turkish uh, people that HDP is linked to PKK terrorist organization because HDP doesn't recognize them as a terrorist organization. So therefore, they have a solid base, uh, almost 10 percent. However, 90 percent, 92 percent of the voters uh, is not 
please what HTTP is doing currently. So hopefully there will be a more dialogue and then uh, talk about the Kurdish issues. And I just want to highlight that currently deputy prime ministers are Kurdish. I mean, there is no Kurdish problem in Turkey. There are problem about PKK. So if there's a separation between Kurdish and PKK, I think we'll have a better understanding what the issue is in Turkey. Many thanks for joining us there, Ali. We've been speaking there to Ali Sina, who's the president of the Turkish Heritage Organization.